guys, are you wondering why I'm sitting in this closed setup? Well, here I am talking about claustrophobic fear and a couple of ways how to overcome claustrophobic fear. Uh, as someone who already has claustrophobic fear and if you don't know what claustrophobic fear basically is, it's the fear of closed spaces. And here I am, as you can see, I'm in this closed setup. Okay, um, the reason I can't close myself because I'm talking to you, but you know, I'm in this closed setup to talk to you on the fear of closed spaces. Many people today have this fear of closed spaces. Uh, you know, maybe to go in an elevator, maybe to go in an aircraft or in a modern machine, or uh, there are claustrophobic caves. Um, and in different places, uh, you know, you get scared of, sometimes people are even scared to be in a place that can get suffocated or, you know, tied up kind of a place where you can't move, you know, and things like that. So. If you are someone who has this fear of closed spaces or claustrophobic fear, uh, I'm just going to share one or two important uh, tips because uh, I'm someone, like I said, I have this fear and I was able to overcome that and still fly in an aircraft, go in the elevator and uh, go um, you know, into MRI scans and all of that stuff. Uh, on a very regular basis, I've flown and all of that, and I know what it means to have that fear. Like the minute they close the door of the aircraft, and you realize, you know what, till you land on the other side, you won't be able to get out. And that fear can be really taunting to a person who has claustrophobic fear. Um, but what I want to talk to you today about is how can you you know, overcome claustrophobic fear. A couple of things that I was able to deal with. Um, the first and foremost thing I want to share is, you know, sometimes, you know, it's all, you know, the kind of thought process that we have at that point of time, you know. Uh, for somebody like me who has a very um, imaginative uh, spirit, you know, I can imagine anything. I write, written a lot of stories in my life, right? Uh, I've written even uh, romantic stories, I've written, uh, you know, adventure stories, community stories, gospel stories, and, uh, you know, even something like uh, horror kind of stories, like Final Destination kind, um, you know, terror attacks and things like that. So I know what it means to imagine those things, right? That I can imagine anything and everything. Um, if you put me in a spot, I can imagine how everything can come crashing down. So that's my imaginative spirit. Um, so claustrophobic fear tends to take you to a place where you tend to be thinking things beyond what is the reality. You get what I'm saying? Your, your imaginations are playing up. That's why the Bible says in the book of Corinthians that you should cast off all those wrong imaginations which does not align with God's will and God's word. That's why you have to, the Bible says again in, uh, when the Apostle Paul said that you have to think of the right kind of thoughts. Because you know you have to remember that as your thoughts are social, you, your life be. So you know you have to think of good things, think of the right things, think of the things that are worthy of being thought of. So you know when your mind is trying to make you think of you know all the ways things can go wrong, how your plane can crash or how your MRI machine can turn into a final destination movie scene, you know, immediately turn your thoughts. You know, the scripture talks about the word repentance we often use in the Christian. But the word repentance in Greek is actually metanoia, which means change of mind. Change your mind, change your thought process. And um, from a place of, you know, things can go wrong or all these wrong imaginations, turn it around to something good. Turn it around to, you know what, my life is in the palm of God's hands. Turn it around to, you know what, the Bible says that uh, God has numbered uh, my head. You know, he, he has me and I'm safe and secure in God. So, you know, turn it around to that. And always remember that, you know, life may go beyond your control, but it can never go beyond the control of Almighty God. And remember that even if you are stuck in a rut, stuck in a closed scenario, you're not alone. God is with you. You know, I remember a time when I was uh, in a MRI machine and I was so scared, uh, I was freaking out and, you know, they were not able to take the readings properly. So what they did was they brought my dad in to come in and 
stand with me. He didn't do anything physically. He didn't, couldn't even talk because, you know, I was I'm not supposed to talk at all. So I was kind of like stuck to this machine. But I have all this fear, you know, watching Final Destination and stuff. You know what can happen. So what I did, I mean, he just came and he st st stood next to me. That's it. And the fact that my dad was with me. I don't know, my fear just went, my panic just went and I was just not freaking out anymore. And I don't know how the next two hours just passed by with all the tests being done and I was being able to do it well. So what I'm trying to say here is knowing that your Heavenly Father is with you in that closed space. God is with you when you are in that aircraft. God is with you when you are in the elevator. God is with you when you are... Um, in whichever closed space that you are in MRI machine or you know maybe if you're an adventurous person you wouldn't go into a claustrophobic cave or whatever I mean God is with you that's what I want to share God is with you and the more you understand that your father is with you you will you know focus on that you will focus on that and that you don't know how the fear just disappears that's what I can guarantee that you know uh, from a person who used to get so scared initially when I remember when I was a kid when I was feeling for the first time I was so scared I started demanding that you know they you know bring the plane down and I want to get out of the plane you know I was so scared but uh, to a place where you know I fly very frequently but I'm not scared with the same level of fear like of course the element will be there and then you just calm yourself with the word of God and, and by the end of the day I'm like okay fine you know what a plane crashes by the end of the day I know I, I will go to be with the Lord Jesus I have you know I don't have any fear on that part so you know like when, you, when you're in that place of security when you know that you know what nothing can go beyond the control of Almighty God if you are giving your life to Jesus, you have the assurance of heaven even if things really go bad. And But beyond that, you can just live with that you know, assurance that God is in control. God is a good God, loving Father. And being aware of that will help you face that. And with the presence of God in your life, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you will be able to change your thoughts. You will be able to, you know, repent at that point of time. You know, the minute any negative, you know, imagination comes across your mind that does not align with God's word, you can change it immediately. Two more things I want to share is, you know, it's okay to have that fear. Don't write yourself off. Don't go to a place where you are like, you know, uh, you know, I'm too bad. I have claustrophobic fear. No, I mean. Uh, I mean, people have all sorts of fear. People are, I mean, I have claustrophobic fear. So, I, I mean, if you have it, you know me, I have it as well. There are different people I know who have claustrophobic fear. It's, it's, it's something common. Don't worry or put yourself down because you have that fear, okay? Uh, you know, the scripture talks about in the book of Corinthians 10, verse like 13, it says, um, you know, what kind of trial, temptation, test that you have is common for everybody. That's what I'm to say. It's not something new. Like maybe you have claustrophobic fear. Somebody else may have, you know, uh, tishiti phobia, which is the fear of accidents. I'm going to talk about that again uh, very soon because a lot of people seem to be having this uh, different kinds of fear. Fear of water, fear of air, fear of heights, name it. Even I have fear of heights. I mean, so many different kinds of fears. I have fear of bees also. Um, different people have different kinds of fear so whatever it is don't worry don't put yourself down because of that and secondly be bold and tell people i mean once you are able to tell that and confide with the people around you they don't pressurize you and then when need arises when you want to take that step you start taking the step and start facing your fear so my brother sometimes we have to take the elevator or there's no other way out and you know we also understand okay he has that fear uh, so, you know, we don't push him too much, but at the same time, he slowly takes a step and then, you know, he overcomes. So that's how you have to deal with it. You know, I'm not asking you to just avoid it the rest of your life. But what I'm saying is, accept it, take it slow, let the process go on. And eventually, when the requirement comes, you, you know, allow the Holy Spirit to work in, in and through your life. You'll be able to deal with it and... Uh, come out victorious so that's what i wanted to share with you guys on claustrophobic fear i hope you like this i know i'm staying in a weird position talking about this but i just thought you know this would be more relevant talking from 
inside a closed cabin like this. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I hope you like, comment, share, subscribe. We we'll love to hear from you guys, and all details are in the description. Check them out. Check out my daily podcast. Check out the radio program, my books. Check, follow me on social media, and I will see you back very soon. All right, and God bless you. If your heart stops beating now, do you know where you're going? If you came face to face with death now, do you know where you're going? And this is not a message of condemnation. This is a message of hope. There is a God who loves you so much. He sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to come down and pay a heavy price by shedding every drop of His blood on the cross. Thank you for dying for my sin. When you believe in Him, you have free gift of salvation for you. That assures us that we will go to heaven when we die instead of suffering in hell forever. I just encourage you today to make the simple step of faith and say, Jesus, I thank you for what you did on the cross. Thank you for giving me this gift of eternal life.